We're slinging spells and tempting fate. That's right, it's Talisman Harry Potter Edition from the Op. <laughs> In this sorcery-skinned version of Talisman, up to six players take on the role of the main characters from the Harry Potter universe. Depending on their alignment, characters attempt to navigate the wizarding world on a quest to defeat Lord Voldemort, or prove their allegiance to him. The first player to accomplish either goal wins the game. Setup begins with the game board placed center. The board features a variety of locations from within the wizarding world all divided into three regions. The outer region, middle region, and inner region. Separate and shuffle the encounter decks by their region type on the back, outer or middle. Place both decks near the board. Shuffle and place the spell cards face down nearby as well. Place the purchase cards face up in an orderly pair of rows along with the hallow cards nearby. Set the Lord Voldemort figure in the Great Hall and place his character card near the board. Create a supply of fate tokens and galleons within reach of all players. Next, shuffle the character cards and deal one to each player. Each character card has two sides which have different abilities and stat values. Additionally, characters belong to one of two factions, the Order of the Phoenix or the Death Eaters. Each player chooses which side of the character card they'll play for the game, other people make moral judgments of that person, and the remaining cards are returned to the box. Players then set up their personal play area by taking a stat dial board and setting their starting values for might, magic, and life, taking their character figure and placing it in the starting space listed on their character board, taking a number of fate tokens as listed on their board and two galleons. Checking their special abilities section for any special starting rules. If a player has spells, they draw them from the spell deck into a personal hand that is hidden from the other players. Finally, place the advantage token near the board with the advantage side face up for the faction with the least characters in the game. The player who most recently watched a Harry Potter movie, or I guess read a book, goes first with play proceeding clockwise. Gameplay occurs in turns, each divided into two phases, movement and encounter. First, in the movement phase, the active player rolls a die and moves their character a number of spaces equal to the result in one direction, either clockwise or counterclockwise within their region. A character cannot double back within one movement. They can always move in a different direction on their next turn. When moving in the inner region, movement is halved from the die roll, rounded down. So a roll of five would allow two spaces of movement. Additionally, whenever a player rolls a one for their movement in any region, they trigger Lord Voldemort's movement. It was really hard to say. I didn't want to say it, but I said it, okay. They roll an additional die for Voldemort, moving him that many spaces either clockwise or counterclockwise. As the first movement in this step, the active player may use one movement point to first move Voldemort to an adjacent space in another region. If he lands on a space with at least one character, the active player chooses one of those characters for him to battle. More on battles in a second. Next, in the encounter phase, the active character has an encounter with either the space they landed on and any cards at that location, or one character of the opposite alignment on that space. When encountering a space, the character follows the space's instructions, which usually involve rolling a die for a result or drawing encounter cards. When drawing encounter cards, the player draws cards from that region's deck equal to the instructions on the space, subtracting one for each card already at that location. They then resolve the cards in order from lowest encounter number to highest. Encounter cards may include a name, region icon, card type, including followers, enemies, events, and more, card alignment, either neutral 
Order of the Phoenix, or Death Eater. Same alignment and counter number, opposite alignment and counter number, opposite alignment stats, and of course, game text. Let's look at some of the encounter cards we might find in the deck. We've got objects. These items provide benefits and sometimes increase a stat value during encounters, but you don't change them on a player stat dial. Characters may carry up to four unique objects by default, but some cards increase this limit. Places, observers, and events. These cards are simple in that the character follows their instructions. However, whenever one or more event cards are drawn, the advantage token is flipped. Followers. Depending on their alignment compared to the active characters, this card could either be a potential follower or an enemy. If a follower, the active character may recruit them into their personal play area to a maximum of three followers. Players may ditch followers to stay within this limit, leaving them on the current space of the board. If the card is an enemy though, battle ensues. Battles fall into two categories, either might or magic. When fighting enemy cards, the indicated skill will be noted at the bottom, while fighting other characters of an opposing alignment are always magic battles. Cause you know, you gotta use your wand somewhere. Let's explain battling an enemy first. After declaring any evasion options or special abilities from spells, objects, or character cards, the active player rolls one die and adds the result to their character's applicable skill score. Another player then rolls a die for the enemy card, adding the enemy's might or magic score to the result. At this point, the player can spend one fate token to re-roll their attack die, but they can only do this once. Additionally, the advantage token provides a plus one attack bonus to the face-up faction when fighting the opposing faction. The opposing faction also receives a minus one attack penalty in these battles. The totals are then compared. If the character's attack score is higher, they win and take the enemy card as a trophy. If the enemy score is higher, the character is defeated, they lose one life, and their turn immediately ends. If the scores are tied, nothing happens, and the result is a standoff. Everybody goes home and just practices their magic some more. When fighting another character, the process is the same with the following exceptions. The defending character can evade and use abilities first. Then, both characters may declare more abilities if they wish. Both characters roll at the same time. Then, they may spend one fate once to re-roll if they wish. The attacker chooses first, then the defender. If the attacker passed on this, they can't spend a fate token after the defender has decided. After the outcome is determined, the winner may either force the loser to lose one life, or they may take an object, a hallow, or a galleon from the loser. The active player, if they won, can also attack one of the defender's followers. Battles with Voldemort allow the attacker to choose the skill type first. If the player wins, they escape his clutches and roll one die to determine what occurs based on his card. If they are defeated, they lose one life. The final battle with Voldemort is always a Magic 12 battle. Some other important rules in the Harry Potter version of Talisman. Trophies. When a character gains an enemy card, they keep them as trophies. At the end of their turn, a player may discard five skill points worth of trophies to raise their might or magic by one. Fate tokens. These measure a character's luck in the wizarding world, and spending one allows the player to re-roll one die for a movement roll, battle roll, or when interacting with cards or spaces. Spells. Page 12 of the rulebook includes a handy chart which indicates the maximum number of spell cards a character may acquire based on their magic score. Spells must either be used for their effect or can be discarded to activate a special ability. Hallow cards. These crucial relics can be acquired in multiple ways, similar to purchase cards. 
Hallow cards may be discarded in the Room of Requirement, allowing a player to enter the Great Hall and potentially win the game. Important spaces on the board, including King's Cross Station, Quidditch Pitch, Hogwarts Gates, and the Room of Requirement have special rules for advancing between regions. See pages 13 and 14 in the rules for more details. Turns continue until one player manages to enter the Great Hall using a hollow and successfully overcome Voldemort in a magic battle, either by defeating him if the character is of the Order of the Phoenix, or by proving their worthiness to sit at his right hand as a Death Eater. If they fail the challenge, the character returns to the moving staircase. If they succeed in their magical challenge, that player wins the game. And that's the basics of Talisman Harry Potter. I'm Becca Scott, this is Good Time Society, and we so much appreciate you watching this video. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and check out all of our awesome board game and tabletop RPG content. We'll see you later.